These days, I'm finding cannier and cannier tech support scammers. Here's an example. All right. Just give me a while. Let me go ahead and check it for you. So this guy has just connected, and the first command he runs is device management. He's taking a look at the devices he's dealing with. In my case, I run VMware, and he selects a disk drive and looks carefully at the description. He sees VMware. Oh, I see that. So he immediately knows <laughs> that I'm probably trying to scam bait him, and he decides right. just to hang up the call. So a little while later, I phoned the same organization back and I was able to disguise the drive. This is a guide to show you how you too can disguise all of those devices and nuke your virtual machine really stealthy. Okay, so how do you make your Windows 10 machine stealthy? Well, the first thing to do is to make the devices stealthy. You do this by running regedit. Again, Windows R regedit will do this. And when registry editor comes up, you're looking for a particular point called hkey local machine, then system, then control set 001, and then enum. And again, this will be in the description below if you can go navigate straight to this point in the registry. So, at this point, I need to be able to edit this part of the registry. And you won't normally be able to do this. Only system can actually change anything in the registry at this point. So the first thing to do is give yourself that permission. So if you right click on enum, hit on permissions, and then have a look at the permissions for enum. And you'll see that only system is allowed to write or update this point. Owners, owner rights are not given and everyone else can just read. So if we look at the system, what we need to do then is just add yourself as a, an administrator for this object at this point. And you do that by clicking on add, type in your username, whatever it is. In this case, my username is just username. Click on check names and hit okay. And at this point I've added one user and I want to give this user full control at this point. So if I hit apply, it will say access denied. And the reason for that is I still don't have permission. So in order to give myself permission for not just this object, but everything below it, click on advanced and then change the owner of this point in the directory. And I've not only got to change the owner at this point, but everything below it. So the first thing to do is click on change. And again, you'll need to type in your username. Again, check names just to make sure it's spelt right. And hit OK initially, but you've only changed the top level at this point to username. What you need to do is also tick this box saying replace owner on subcontainers and objects. So again, make sure that button is ticked, hit apply. And it will say I couldn't set the owner on the key selected or some of its sub keys. That should be OK. And again, OK right out of this again. OK, it's just telling you that I couldn't do everything. So at this point, I've allowed username to be the owner, but I haven't still given everything below this point the permission. So you've got to go again back into advanced. And this time, click on the replace all child object permission entries with inheritable permission entries from this object. That just means that the full control that we've given ourselves at this point will be inherited by everything below it. So I tick the box and again, hit okay. It will warn me that it will change the mission. That's okay, say yes. And okay out of it again, it will tell you that some sub keys couldn't be changed, but that should be okay. So again, okay and apply. Okay, now at this point, you should have permission to edit everything below this point, but just do a double check. If you expand enum, maybe select something like SCSI and select one of the disks here. I'll, I'll select my CD-ROM. If you right click at this point and press permissions, you should see your username in here. If you don't, you won't be able to edit this. So double check that you've done each of the two steps above. Give yourself ownership, give yourself permission. Okay, so at this point, we now need to go back up to the enum level. So just let me close that one and click on enum. And at this point, we look for 
three or four registry entries. Now again, this is in the description, but you need to right click the enum part of the registry, click on find and paste in the first of the four values that are in the description. The first one, they all look very similar, but you'll notice that at the end of the first batch of numbers, this digit will change from a, a seven, an eight, a five and an F. But if you look at this one, this is actually going to be the GUID for the disk. So if we click on find next, it should jump to the SCSI part of the directory and it will highlight one particular value underneath something called disk and vendor. And again, its description is the VMware disk. Now you'll be editing one of two types, either something called friendly name or device description. In the case of a disk, if you see a friendly name at all, that's the one that you need to edit. So click on friendly name, right click to modify. And again, you'll see the typical device description that comes up whenever you expand what the disk device looks like. So it's important to give it a fairly realistic value. In my case, I would advise you just to use whatever disk you currently use in your host machine. So if it happens to be a Samsung 500 gig disk, let's give it a 500 gigabyte. ATA is usually what is put in to devices at this point. Obviously vary this. We don't want all of these virtual machines looking the same for scammers. So if you click on OK, again, I've just changed the friendly name. There's no need to, to change the device description as well. Uh, just a friendly name if it appears. And that's it for the first uh, part, which is the disk. The second place we're going to look is the device, which is normally associated with the display adapter. So we go back up to enum, right click and do find. And I replace this with the next value. Again, there should be a digit eight here. If you do find next, it should find, yes, in this case, it's the SVGA device. Now here there's no friendly description, so you have to edit the device description at this point. So again, click on the device description, right click, modify. And although it's tempting just to change the last bit of this, actually you'll find that VMware appears because it's pulling entries out of the device driver files. So you actually need to delete the whole lot and give yourself whatever display adapter device you'd like. Let's try NVIDIA. Um, we'll give ourselves a GTX 1080. Okay, whoops, give yourself a realistic device. And that's enough. So the device description for this particular register entry is enough. So we go back to enum again, right click and do find. And this time you'll need the third registry entry to find. Again, this is the in the description. And you'll see it has a digit five at this point, hit next. And here we've got our VMware friendly name of the CD device. So again, there's both device description and friendly name. Friendly names here, modify it. So this will now look like, we'll give ourselves an NEC, NEC DVD read writer or something. I'll do it, we'll call it SATA DVD just to make it look convincing. Okay, so the friendly name has changed here. So that's it for that device. The last one that we need to do again, go up to enum and you will look for, um, in this case, another registry entry, right click again, do find, enter the value that will have an F at the end. Now, unfortunately this device has three entries. So we look for the first one first, and this is the mouse device. Uh, we'll give it a chance and it will find, it should find something under the ACPI. And we need to go in and again, there's no friendly device description. So we need to edit device description, right click modify. And we'll just call this again, delete the whole lot, Microsoft, capital M, Microsoft pointing device, but we're not finished yet, unfortunately. So you've, Updated one, but there's another two to do. F3, we'll look for the next entry, which is just below that. So we've already um, updated this. That's just the description of the device. So we need to hit F3 again. At this point, we go to a different 
point in the registry. And again, it's got a device description. You right click it, modify, and again, give ourselves, in this case, this is the USB version of the same device. So Microsoft USB, USB pointing device. And if I click F3, it'll go just to the next line. So we've already updated this. There's no need to update this part. So our final F3 takes us to another point in the registry. And again, the device description needs to be modified here. So right click, modify, and just make this Microsoft. Okay, and once I've made those three changes for that last registry entry, that's it done as far as device description's gone. So if I close the registry, and if I run up, in this case, device, So let's have a look at our devices now. So for this computer, let's look at the disk drive. We've got our Samsung 500 gig. Let's look at the display adapter, and that's an NVIDIA GTX 1080. Let's look at the CD-ROM, and it's an NEC DVD device. And if you look at mouse, it's a Microsoft pointing device. So all of these entries have now been updated. And as if the scammer looks into your devices, he won't see any references to VMware. So that's one part. The second part is how to disguise your VMware tools. Now I'm assuming at this point you have already installed VMware tools. Let's just have a look at them. So the first thing to do is the easy bit, which is just disabling this icon so it's not visible. Okay, so it's no longer in our system tray. But what we do need to do is make sure it doesn't appear in the included software. So if I do again Windows R, appwiz.cpl. This is just a quick shortcut route to look at what software is installed. And you can see that VMware tools is quite obviously there. Now at this point, I decided to have a dig into the registry for VMware tools. And as it turns out, it's the same in every installation, unlike devices where you really do have to go in and individually edit your registry because quite simply, it's different for every case. With VMware tools, there's a standard installation and I've included two registry files, one to update the registry, the other to restore. Okay, so I've given myself two registry entries. Let me just switch on the, the fact that I just, I never like this where I show my extensions. So you should have two files from the download in the description, one called restoretools.reg and the other one called stealthytools.reg. These are editable. So if you want to have a look at this, you can see what I've put in as the description. And most I've given the publisher as Microsoft, but I've called the display name as Visual C++. You can change this to whatever you want. And there's a couple of registry entries to do this. Um, so if you need to change that to something else or even give it a different icon, um, there's ways of doing that if you just browse through that file. Anyway, if you if you look at the installed software and if you double click stealthytools.reg, you'll be asked to confirm, do you want to update your, uh, your registry? If you click yes, and it should be successfully added. If it doesn't, you need to be an admin user. And if you click OK, and then we look back at our programs which are installed. So at this point, you will see that VMware tools no longer appear. But instead of that, there's something called Microsoft Visual C++ 2005. Say so you can call the software whatever you like, but that is now the disguised version of VMware tools. If you really want to restore it again, if you just double click the restoretools.reg and confirm, and again, go back into programs and features, and you'll see that VMware tools reappears again. So I'm going to keep that as stealthy. So let me rerun stealthy tools. Yes, and again, and again, if I go back into programs and features, we've got our C++ 2005 entry. So it's good to keep the VMware tools because that keeps the virtual machine running as fast as it can and you can cut and paste between your host machine and the VM. So it's always important to have that. 
And the very last thing you need to do, and probably the easiest and one that probably people know best, it's simply to, to update the BIOS information. And you do that outside the VM. So we're going to shut down this virtual machine. Let me do that. Um, when we shut it down, we then need to go in and edit the VMX file associated with this virtual machine. So the VMX file is simply a configuration file. And you just need to search for that VMX file wherever you installed the virtual machine. In my case, it's a Windows 10 machine. So I simply right click the VMX file and I add a line to it. And I can ignore everything that's in this file. We just need to add a line to it. Say it's called smbios.reflecthost equals true. You can either have true or true in inverted commas, it doesn't really matter, or the word number one. And what that will do is it will change the vendor and the host machine from VMware to, um, in this case, whatever your particular host machine is. So if we save this one, Click save. And if I go back into the machine at this point, it should be fully stealthy. So let's fire it back up again. So if we power that up, we click on. So if we do Windows R, and the first thing we'll do is just check our devices. So device mgmt.msc. Let's go into our devices. And you should see that the four devices, which are the giveaways, Disk drive, display adapter, CD-ROM, and mice do not contain the word VMware. That looks fine. And the second thing we need to do is the app Wiz, wiz.cpl, and look for our installed software. Again, no indication that VMware is there. And finally, if we do msinfo32, we should see that the system manufacturer and system model do not contain VMware. Instead of running msinfo32, the occasional scammer will also run a command called dxdiag. In fact, that command pulls the same system manufacturer and system model information from the configuration of your host. So even if we run dxdiag, which I'm just about to do, you'll see that it also contains the word your gigabyte, which is my motherboard manufacturer and system model, again, does not contain VMware. So that's about it for this tutorial. I hope this is useful and I hope it will keep people scam baiting. Once, as usual, if you like this sort of video, please give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe because it gives me the motivation to produce more of these and to track down scammers. So once again, thank you for watching and please comment.